welcome back to a couple of creatives. Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Lizzie. So we're engaged and we run a video production company together along with many other things considering our YouTube and Instagram followings, but I digress. We post these episodes on the first and third Monday of the month, but if you're not getting enough couple of creatives, then head over to our creative club. That is found at www.patreon.com slash a couple of creatives, where you'll get exclusive bonus episodes, Lightroom presets, prints, and more. A warm what's up to all of our creative club members. And for all of you returning listeners, feel free to leave us a review below. Now back to the episode. Yo, Lizzie, I was super stressed out this week. I'm not usually super stressed out and negative. Well, like, I'm usually you, like I'm, I'm usually like the optimistic one. But when you do get really stressed out, it's like the worst. <laughs> like I feel Which like being stressed often. out like isn't as bad. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, okay, Lizzie's a little stressed right now. Like I just like plug on through. But when you're stressed, it's like everybody knows about it. Yeah, and I'm it's a bit like of a drama queen. Really awkward. Not even like drama queen. Like drama king of the castle and the kingdom. Yeah. Like everybody needs to know, hey, I'm going to even post this on Instagram and tell everybody that I've felt defeated this week. Yeah. So I felt defeated this week. You are sassy. It's weird because I'm feeling better now, but going back, I was feeling very stressed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Wednesday now. Even just like this afternoon, I was still feeling stressed. I think there's like a lot of pressures that are... Why are you so stressed out? Tell the kids at home what's been going on. You know, when you use that voice. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little weird right now, guys. Okay. I'm very hungry and I'm tired. We're also keeping an eye on our Uber Eats meal. So this might <laughs> pause in the middle for a second. Um, so going back, uh, obviously coronavirus, COVID-19 has uh, been taking over everything. everything. COVID, is, are, you, are people saying COVID or do you say COVID? I've heard COVID. People say COVID? Yeah. Oh. Coronavirus. I thought it was like an acronym. Coronavirus has been taking over everything. News, our attention spans, and us as like humans who are just programmed to be like, ah, we might die, consume all the information, which the media is just absolutely loving right now. Well, the news is just like, cool, we have something to talk about for the next little bit. Like the fires in Australia, they were... Everyone was covering, and then now they have their new crisis, and but, so that's but the, all we hear about. The Australian fires did affect us, but it mostly was centralized to Australia. Yes, the coronavirus is like a global pandemic, as yeah. the media likes to say. Yeah, and but what I'm saying is, they love. I'm not saying about the Australian fires; those were actually terrible. Yeah, and well, coronavirus is terrible, but I mean, they just blow things out of proportion. I think everyone can agree that. The yeah. news. They'll just say like whatever first piece of information they get that sounds dramatic, or they'll just give you enough to leave you hanging and stress you out. Well, most of it is lies, but there's some truth in a lot of it's lies things too. And, yeah, it's just it's fear mongering, and yeah. it's frustrating because that is base. I mean. Uh, it's so hard because I know there are going to be people who disagree with me, but the actual risk of getting coronavirus is quite low. No, totally. But it's still like the early but stages of it's everything. It's the early stages of everything. So we're trying to be careful and we're trying not to spread it. And so everyone kind of has to stay put. All big events are getting canceled. Yeah, like they canceled NAB today, which they is like, a, like that's NAB. massive. Yeah, they canceled... Um, We unfortunately just had to cancel our Azores photo course because some of the members were getting concerned. And I mean, considering what Italy just did and Spain, um, what's, I mean, the the way the virus is progressing in Spain, we're just worried that what if we go somewhere and then they shut its doors and we're stuck there? Yeah. Um, It's not even that we're We're necessarily worried about getting the virus. Yeah, or we come home and then we're quarantined. Like we just don't know how people are going to react. But the whole thing about people buying toilet paper is the most ridiculous thing. I don't even know how that started. But I mean, I understand people stocking up on Purell. Purell is sold out on Amazon. Purell and um, like Lysol wipes. I tried to buy Lysol wipes for the office. Tried to buy one. Can't get any. Just I had a to single buy one, some like, like a wet one, yeah. exposed used wet one on Amazon. What is wrong with you? I'm just having fun. Uh, so I this ended up having to, to get podcast. some like green brand, and by green I mean like it's a clean brand. But I know that 
it definitely doesn't kill as much as normal Lysol, you know? Yeah. That's why the Lysol has gone. Fun fact, Candace Poole couldn't find any, like Casey Neistat's um, wife couldn't find any hand sanitizer lines. So she got Billy to buy a bunch of promotional hand sanitizer, like the small bottles so that she would get some because the only place you could buy it was from a promotional company. That, a like, promotional company? Like a company where you know you can get like, oh, I'll put, get my logo on a t-shirt. So she put Billy logos on hand sanitizers so that she would have them around <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Can you imagine being the person that owns Purell and just being like, You're like I'm set, bitches. Like, <laughs> <laughs> everybody wants to be me. <laughs> so to tie that's the-, the only person that's happy about this is is the No, yeah, of course. There's people who the benefit CEO from Purell. from all this 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 insanity that's going on. So yeah. We're uh we're a little bummy because stuff's getting canceled that like A would have been fun and And that B, we've worked a lot really we've hard worked on. Worked on. Yeah, we worked really hard on and um now we're we've invested money in some of these things that we're not going to get back time that I mean we will postpone the Azores course. So that's what I'm keeping in mind, but I am bummed because I know everyone else was super excited and I hate being the person to bail on that and disappoint people. Yeah. In but addition long, to that, the stock market's crashed. Stock market's like crashed. lowest it's ever been. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. You came here for inspiration and you're well, just no, getting... No. Well, there's going to be inspiration. <laughs> we're going to talk leading about... leading up to the inspiration. I'm just trying to explain why... No, a, I get it. I'm just A multitude saying. of things had bummed me out and it takes a lot to bum me out. So now we say, have... Everybody count how many times we say bum in this no. episode. No. <laughs> okay. Bum bum. <laughs> So our cat's bum is really gross, by the way. Anyways, oh, why would you talk about that? Well, no, it's not important. Anyways, going back to it. So stock market stock crashed. market crashed. Canceled a bunch of courses, a bunch of money. We may lose certain contracts because of it. Yep. So we're not going to move forward on a couple of jobs because of it. Yeah, like other things are still coming in. It's not like we're going to go broke, but. One in particular that I was so excited about, I don't know. It's not like they've said anything, but I just have this feeling it's not going to happen. There's just like a weird looming presence and it's hard to be like, what's going to happen? And I'm so sad about it. And then the more I do research, the more, and like when I find like trusted sources and start reading into it a lot more, I just get like annoyed and afraid and just like all of it. So I was just feeling like bummy for a bit. In addition to the pressures of trying to release regular YouTube videos, and then I posted my video today and it didn't do well. And I was like, tight, 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 tight. <sighs> I'm being tested. Yeah. Yeah. And I was but feeling sad. I know. That is the worst thing because you have so you have so much hope for that YouTube video you spend all that time working on. And you're just like oh, I just want to feel the validation. I want to feel the goodness that comes back to me from this because I put so much work into it. And then when it doesn't come and it flops, it's like... It's the worst. (sighs) We spent like four days on my video that just went live today. It was like a day like a day of scripting and shooting, three days of editing with a bunch of stuff and then putting together like the thumbnail and title. And then it went out and it was like, your video, like they're really nice on YouTube. They're like, it, your video... Because after the first hour, they tell you how it's done. Yeah, and they have a little comment. Your video is not getting clicked through as often. Don't worry about it. Some topics are just not as popular as others. And I was like, you're basically just saying, your video shit, son. It's not doing well. But you better also, get a better title and thumbnail screw you, now. you, YouTube. You could change this for me if you wanted to. Yeah. Don't tell me it's all my fault. I know. We have subscribers and apparently that's... Yeah, it's like, excuse me, I have all these people that clicked and said they wanted to see it. I don't think you're showing it to all of them. Yeah. Don't think so. So these are all like side tangents of like the complexities and the depth that can make us sad. And then just like little things will trigger me. Like I'll get a weird email. I don't even think they're that complex. Like I think it's like, (laughs) I think everybody gets it. (sighs) But it's like one thing on top of the other on top of the other. And um, I was actually feeling like okay about everything. I'm not, I'm, I'm okay yeah. because, um, so I posted it. I think Instagram. somebody in the, in the couple has to be the balance. Oh yeah. If both of, if both of you are like in a downward spiral. Oh, like boy. I think you might even be sensing that I'm sad and you're like, whoa, I need the positive vibes going to make sure that yeah, this, but that like this today doesn't derail. I actually got a little stressed, but about like other stuff, I actually got stressed because like another project came on and I was like, Oh, that's a lot of stuff I have to do suddenly. Yeah. Um, but not again, I'm not discouraged. No. 
Um, it is a lot of work and things are just feeling like a lot lately. And that's the that's just the reality of it. So can I, can I talk a little bit about my planner? Because... <laughs> Well, no, we need to, okay, you have- I need an affiliate You have code. a minute of, for the planner. No, but it's relevant. Okay, let's, so I'm, I'm excited week, to see how you tie this together. Every week, it's, I don't even have to tie it together. It makes so much sense. Every <laughs> week you have a weekly preview. And so there's like two pages you fill out about um, what you got done the week before and what worked, what didn't. It's just like a reflection and also a plan for your upcoming week. Yeah. One section of it is like it, you're supposed to list three to five things that you accomplished. And that's been super helpful because you sit there and you go, okay, what did I get done this week? Because you always feel like you didn't get anything done. Every always. time I sit down, I go, I didn't get anything done. Like I, this was not my productive week. Like sometimes I have some really big things, but um, you're like, oh, what am I going to stretch to figure out? what my three to five things are. So I start flipping through my pa my planner and looking at my to-do list. And then I realize, oh, I got that really big task off my list. Oh yeah, I finished that. Oh, I did post that thing. Oh, I did like complete this project and I got feedback on it and it did really well. Or, And then you have all this motivation again to know that I am getting things done. I am accomplishing things. Things are overall really good. I'm... A lot of times, if you're a really type A person, you are setting unrealistic expectations for yourself and usually for other people. And I remember listening to um, Candy... Can oh, wow. I'm Candy. So Candace and Casey. I just renamed them Candy. <laughs> Their podcast and um, Candace talked about how the root of all like disappointment and like fights for them was in expectations they had for each other, oh, like unrealistic huge. expectations. Yeah. And I do agree with that, but I mean, you have to have a certain expectation of things. Like I have an expectation that you will be there for me when I need you to be. You yeah. know what I mean? If you if you don't feel like, feel those things for people then, or... Yeah, I but think it's it's, well, it's setting realistic expectations, realistic expectations and something that's yeah. something I'm not good at, 100%. Yeah, and I I'm working on it every week cuz I try and tone back and tone back like what I allow myself to work on, yeah. but it is hard. Um every week I do feel like it's a bit jammed because stuff just comes up or you have one day where you don't feel motivated and then you're behind. So, uh yeah, just being conscious of the things that you are getting done. And actively, not even just like sitting there and like thinking about it for a minute, like try and write them down, write down that list. And then at the end of the month, look at that huge list of things that you got done and you'll feel so much better. Like you'll, you'll see what you're accomplishing. It's like how when you make a video after like two years of starting video. Yeah. So like you got a camera two years later, you have a video. Go back and look at the first video you ever made. Yeah. And you can see the difference. And if, Same and thing. Especially if you have them saved on a hard drive or if they're on YouTube, you can be like, whoa. Maybe I should I take that down. <laughs> no. I was just going to say, wow, like look at the portfolio that I've built too. Like yeah, of all the things. Totally. Or if you look at your Instagram, wow, look at the life I've had and yeah. the things I've done and the amount of photos that I have and the progression I've made. Yeah. Like It is a good reminder to celebrate those accomplishments because I'm very quick to be like, cool videos up next video. And I'm like not even celebrating yeah. the last video or like things that we've worked on. I'm just like, and I'm always like feeling like I'm in the race before. Yeah. So, so it's a thing with my personality too. So like we, we talked about the Enneagram in one of our episodes mm -hmm. last type three, I'm a type three, the achiever. Apparently I have a very, <laughs> it's hard for I me to just- I have a wing of a three, but yeah. I'm not. It's totally hard for me good. to like appreciate the top of the mountain. Like I always feel like I need to be climbing the mountain. Yep. Or like one thing for me is I need to just like stop and be like, whoa, I'm on a mountain and that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Let's look around. Whoa, people, office, fiance, cat. I know. Dang, things are okay, Chris. I know. Well, even yesterday you were like, oh, well, can I be totally transparent? Whatever. You were like, oh, there aren't like a ton of deals coming in, yeah. like not as many as you expected. Yeah. And 
the the irony is that we literally got one today, but the irony is that we I signed three today. Yeah, and I, I said it yesterday. Yeah, so there you go. Um, and I was like, but really, Chris, like, what do you need more of? I know for all this extra money, like we have money to live from many other sources that yeah. we can we can control and we can keep going. So what do we need? An, a car? We have one. What do we need? A condo? We have one. What do we need? A cat? We have one. No, you know totally. What I mean? Well, it, it just it feels sometimes like the ship is sinking. So you're like, oh, cool, stock market mm-hmm. bottom out. I lost a lot of money in the stock market. Market. Then it's like, oh, jobs aren't coming in. Oh wait, we have an office expense. Oh wait. We've been eating out a lot. Oh wait, we mm-hmm. I have a full time employee and you and then all of a sudden you're like, actually, is it positive cash flow or negative cash flow? And when it's negative cash flow, you become worried that your ship is sinking. And that's what gives me fear. We're gonna take a brief moment because our food is here. And this is a great opportunity for a mid roll cut. Why yes. It is, Chris. What a brilliant idea. By this point, you've probably been thinking, dang. This is a fun episode. I should probably go leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever I am listening to this podcast on. I should write something thoughtful and positive because that's the type of person that I am. If you didn't catch that, uh, this that's like sarcasm and humor. Just please leave a review. It actually helps more than you think. Also, they've been talking a lot about this creative club that has exclusive perks like Lightroom presets, prints, and much more. Yo, I want in on that club. I don't like being left out. What's that link again, Lizzie? Is it patreon.com backslash a couple of creatives? Yes. I'm I'm glad I checked with you. Yeah. (laughs) And it only starts at $2 a month. That fish is cray. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm just trying to tell you that it's affordable. It starts at $2. Thank you for listening. So we've eaten our dinner now. Which might make us sluggish because we chose to eat burritos and quesadillas. so good. I ate the whole thing. Literally the place that we ordered from is called Fat Bastard. That's what I am right now. <laughs> That's how I feel, which is also a good segue into another reason why I've been feeling a little sad is I haven't had the chance to really work out a lot because I've been working. So I feel like when I'm not working out, it's this vicious cycle that I feel even worse that I eat bad and then it just keeps going on top of everything else. And then I'm like, I just want to work out and feel not fat. And all my comments are about how I feel and look fat. All your comments are about how you look fat? No, I got one comment that said I look fat and it made me sad. Well, screw that guy. No, I know. But I'm just saying it's a real feeling. And as much as I want to be like, I know I'm not fat. I probably deep down, I've been feeling like I haven't been working out and treating my body properly. So then I feel bad when I miss the gym. And then sometimes I feel like I don't know enough about what's happening at the gym nor my diet. And then I just feel a little like a failure, even though I'm not. I know I'm not. But there's times I can feel that way. No, I also want to go to the gym. I think what also screwed us was daylight savings. (laughs) Because (laughs) then it just made it harder to get up when we normally get up anyways. Do you know what I mean? Totally. We were like, let's get up early. And then we just slept until nine one time. Yeah, it's not not going so well. And I, I too want to work out, but... Yeah, the sleeping thing. It's been a, also it's the been ish- eating thing is has been challenging because sorry if you're creaking, it's the chair I'm in. Um, we're at the office, so we order a lot of our food, and like this week, I'm finally working in the office with you guys. So yeah, we order a lot of our food. We can't yeah. make a lot, and Chris and I haven't been prepping in the evenings because we've been working most evenings. Um, yeah. We I, could meal prep on the weekend, but we're not that type of people. Well, I think we could bring the blender here and start making smoothies here. Totally. I think it's just, it's fair to be like, we live in reality. Like as much as, you know, this podcast should be a, a space for inspiration, the real like it's, Sometimes. It, this is being real. This yeah. is telling you how it actually can be. And if you're going through this too, you're not alone. At this level, we still like experience it on a regular basis. And these are the things that we all struggle with. You know what I mean? So, but here, here's what you should do. Here's what we try to do whenever we're in a bit of a funk. Yeah. Yeah, you you definitely want... One of these things is sit back and look at everything that you do have. And we're very lucky. We have so much. So we're very... Like, we have a lot of new amazing things that have happened, like the office, which is like a lot of work 
still, but it's mainly really awesome. Um, Luna, our Luna's kitten. Luna's been like the best decision Luna's we've ever made. Luna's been the best decision we've ever made. I love her so much. She is my child. It's made us appreciate life even more so. And also yeah. it makes and take us... take breaks. Totally. And um, realize that when you get to take care of something like that, that really appreciates it and loves it and like relies on us. I don't know. It's really when like fulfilling. When I can make her, when I can like rub her belly and make her fall asleep on me and she looks that calm, I get the most satisfaction. So Cause we, I'm like, I'm literally making her life good. Totally. And it's a reminder that the the small and the little things in life are actually amazing, which is, mm-hmm. you know, Lizzie made a v- whole film on that one time. And it's true. The little things are enough in your life. And it's hard to constantly remind yourself of that. Cause it's like, in a perfect world, you'd be like, ah, I always am reminded about the little things, the joyful things. I stop and smell the flowers. It's, it's, it's hard. It's yeah. hard. And it's, it's a struggle all the time. You have because to force yourself to, you get to do it. new normals. You get used to certain things. You're like, oh, I'm doing so great. And then the roller coaster goes down for a bit. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I just need to hold on because I know it will go back up again. But right now, I'm just kind of sad that it's going down. Mm-hmm. So... De- yeah, definitely one thing looking back at everything that you do have. Um, I had a thing number two. It just floated right out. Well, it's also important that when your partner is going through these things, you have to try to f- support them and m- you need to listen. And as much as it can be a oh, struggle that like after a long day's work, you have to come home and all of a sudden maybe it's your partner complaining or you're the person. Like I always feel bad when I'm complaining to you. You know what I mean? I always feel bad where I'm like, but this is how I'm feeling. And like Lizzie's no, like, well, I'm going to feel good. I would rather you talk about it because a lot of times like you just end up being grumpy and then I have to ask you like 12 times what's wrong. And then you're like, I don't know. I guess I am grumpy. Like you don't even know you're doing it. You're like, I guess I am. I wonder why. And then it's this process. Like I was joking with Lucas, Chris's editor about how it takes like a week for us to figure out what's bothering you. <laughs> because sometimes you don't even know. You're just like running around being sassy. You know what I mean? We're a- <laughs> so then it's like process of elimination. We start working through things to figure out like what's wrong. It's re- I don't know. I find it funny, but it, I swear to God, it happens every time. Um, but yeah, if you're this if you're this person's partner, what I would say is take the time to talk with them, talk about the problem. Don't ever be that person because I've had other partners do this to me where they're like, well, I don't know what to tell you then. Like there's always it's a not solution. It's not helpful. And always try to empathize. Yeah. And you um, you have to be nice. Like doing that doesn't help at all. It just shuts down the entire conversation. Well, if anything, Even it if you're adds just like, fuel. I understand why that can be really frustrating. Let's, you know, I'm, I'm not sure... Even if you're not the person that's very good at giving advice, maybe you can recommend someone else for that person to talk to. Yeah, that's huge. Sometimes just listening, like allowing the person to vent is just enough as well. Yeah. And giving the person um, the right opportunity to do so and the right environment to do so is so key as well so that they feel like it's a safe place that they can say pretty much anything. Be like, this is what bo- this is what's bothering me. And then, you know, you never want to come back with being like, well, that's not an actual problem. Yeah. No, like every that. problem is like a real problem. Yeah. And they're valid in their own way yeah. to a degree. But so, they're all, a problem is still a problem. Part of what I think is contributing to your stress is the fact that you are traveling so much. Yeah. And I said to you while you were agreeing to all of those while you were away, I was like, you're on the fast track to burnout. You have to be careful. Like this is a lot. Yeah. Um, and so now I think you're just, you're feeling really tired. You're feeling overwhelmed. And sometimes it's the things that overwhelm you aren't necessarily what's coming up and what's happening right now. It can be what has happened. Totally. And so I think all of that is contributing to this. It, like, yeah, you're being, you're, you're frustrated with, you feel like you're putting in all this effort because you did not just in this video, but over the last month or two, you know, yeah. of going all these places and doing all these things. And it's frustrating when you feel like you're not getting back what you set expectations to get back. Totally. So what I advised you to do and what I try to do for myself is tone back everything a lot and sometimes like, and just forgive yourself for like, life is, is everyone talks about work-life balance. There is no balance. It's give and take. You give a lot to your work, you take from your health and your personal life. Give a lot to your health and your personal life, you take from work. You know what I mean? So take from the thing that is causing you 
stress and anxiety and be nice to yourself. What are some of the things that you want to do that you'll find fun and relaxing? Like for me, number one thing I love doing, never get sick of, could do them multiple times a day, a massage, spa, facial, you name it. I just lie there. And then I'm like warm and like floating in a in a hot tub or like getting my muscles, my tense muscles stretched out. I'm thinking about how I want to book a massage on Friday. <laughs> but it really is... It's more of a hint because we have date night. Oh, <laughs> that's an idea. So yeah, just whether it's taking a bubble bath, reading a book, going for a walk, yeah. taking half a day off or taking a full day off during yeah. the week. And not feeling bad about it. And not, you have to decide, I'm going to do this for me. I'm not going to feel bad about it. I'm going to turn my phone off. I'm going to make the absolute best of that day. And um, yeah, you, I might you do have that tomorrow. to do it. Yeah. I might even just stay home. Who knows? You should. Maybe I you will. You should. You should have a day. I'm sorry I can't join you because tomorrow's the day I, I said I would work late. It's okay. <laughs> um, but another thing that you said too is like, I was also working so much on other projects and for other people and all this other stuff that on Monday night, I got together with a friend because Lizzie went to like a witch ceremony or something. Oh my God. I didn't go to... Okay. It was... I just like to belittle it in a fun way. (laughs) It was the full moon. I actually think it's amazing. And I'm really into moon things and I love like... (laughs) I'm not a huge hippy dippy person. Okay. It's not like... like, Do I believe in it? I don't know. You're not a huge hippy dippy not, person, but like a little bit. But it's more that I think it's fun and I think it's cool and it would be cool if it was real. You know totally. what I mean? But I'm not sitting here going, it's absolutely positively true. I'm just like, oh yeah, getting together with a group of women who want to drink wine, draw tarot cards, like... It sounds awesome. Sit and like do a little meditation, eat some snacks. I was like, just I'm all having fun that. before. I no, think it's I great. Know. Anyways, that's me defending what I did that night. And it was nice. I met some new people and put our good intentions out. I think that's important. That's what we did. We kind of, we literally burned a list of the things we wanted to get rid of and then set intentions for the things we wanted to bring into our lives. So So, um, while Lizzie was doing that. Conjuring up souls. While she was conjuring souls, like Sailor Moon. (laughs) What I decided to do is I texted my friend Lucan, who's a photographer from Toronto and I said like, yeah, man, what are you up to tonight? Uh, he's like, not too much. I was like, do you want to just go like go shoot photos around the city? Just like explore. He's like, yeah, man, I'd love to. So we got together like nine at night, which is pretty late considering that we like normally try to go to bed at 11. So I was like, oh, cool. Two hours. That's what time my party started. Well, we ended up going to bed at one, which is fun. So anyways, I don't know why I said it like that. We just ended up staying up later because we were both having fun that evening in our respective choices. So that night I went out uh, with Lucan and I had this idea for like a short film that I really wanted to make. And it's something for me, like there's there's no sponsor involved. It's not like, oh, this is going to get views. There's no, oh, I have to make this because it will get more subscribers or whatever the hell. No, I was like literally making to make and it felt so wonderful. And then I came home the next day, I started putting all the footage in, found a song, spent like an hour finding this like perfect song. And I like edited the whole thing super quickly and I like love it. Yeah. It's like probably so much. my favorite thing you've ever made. That's really nice of you. And it's still not even done yet, but it's close to being done. I know, but it's because you just made it and you weren't thinking about like it getting views or... Some sort like, of strategic, like you yeah, have to shoot it this like, way. No offense, but... And it's not like it's a bad thing, but like everything you make, you're always thinking about that. Totally. And it's the first thing that you're like, I, you literally just made it for you. Yeah. hundred percent. Like even I feel like the proposal video, like, yeah, it meant a lot to you, but you were also making it for buffer. No, hundred percent. And there's always the, like these other motivations behind it. So it would be cool to see how the world responds to it, but I'm also not going to be too attached to it because I'm just like, I love it. And I'm really excited about that just for me which yeah. is something I haven't done in a very long time. I mean, photography is one of those things, but I still always make it for, Insta- for Instagram. Photography. Photography. Hi, I'm Bill, and welcome to my photography website. Guys, go watch Chris's video where he is this character named Bill, and it's so funny. That's really nice of you. It is so funny. You did such a good job. Like, your delivery was so on point. Thanks. It's also very informational and educational, but mainly Bill is jokes. Yeah. So, you know, I think 
that's a good takeaway is that if you are creative, which I assume most of you guys are, you're creative in some capacity, make something for yourself and, you know, uh, take all the pressure off, be a little selfish for a minute and just do something for, for you. Mm -hmm. And and that, and that comes in many forms. You know, Lizzie mentioned that she might just want to go to the spa or if you want to create something, go and create something. If you want to, you know, just get together with a friend just for the sake of getting together for a friend, like, Whatever it is that relaxes you, that's for you, that will take you away from your stresses, do it. Because on Monday night, I had the best time ever. Mm -hmm. It felt so good. When it comes to, if it's your work that's really overwhelming you and you're feeling like you used to love it, but you don't love it anymore, then our biggest advice would probably be just like, remember... Sorry, there's footprints behind us. Footprints. There's someone with really high heels behind us and it's very distracting. Remember? Our biggest piece of advice would be remember why you started and source that motivation again and then fulfill it. So if you started because you wanted to help people, because you wanted to tell a great story, because you wanted to improve your video skills, like I'm just naming some things, whatever that reason is, then go back to that and usually that'll that'll pretty much always make you feel better. Like do whatever thing that will satisfy that thing you were trying to do. 100%. That goal. Find that core, find that root. Because we all started... Find the core root. <laughs> find the... I don't know, I was going to keep building on that. But oh, basi- basically, we all started for a reason... Yeah. Do do as cheesy as it sounds. Do a little soul searching, and I'm sure you'll oh, you'll yourself. you'll tap back into that again, and you'll find out. Like that. That's what Monday night was for me. Yeah, it's like, oh, this is creating can be like really effortless and fun, and not you know, oh, strategic and like this. Like, I'm glad I love my YouTube videos, and I love making everything else. But it was really cool to just make something with like no expectation which comes down to a kind of a theme of this episode is all about expectations. Can I talk about my planner again? So the other thing my planner does, so it's called the full focus planner, by the way. I don't know if I said that on this podcast already. Um, It has a section where you can write down all your annual goals and you write down why you want to achieve that goal and you write down how you're going to achieve it, but you also write down your reward for that goal. I like that. Because it's equally as important to cherish that reward. We were talking about this earlier. But it's equally as important to cherish that reward as it is just to reach it. Because if you don't, that's the whole point is for you to sit on top of that mountain and be like, damn, look at this thing I climbed. You yeah. know what I mean? Like if, if you don't take that moment to appreciate it, like that, that's what makes life great. Why, why are we trying to do anything if we don't sit back and look at how great things are ever? Self. You've yeah. worked hard for something. So... I hit 100,000 subscribers on Instagram. I mean, oh my God, we're going to have to do that again. I hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. (laughs) I'm so tired. Um, And yeah, my it's funny because my reward that I wanted to give myself, the one that I wrote down, is actually pretty lame. I just said, I'm going to go out to dinner with like you, my mom, and Alicia. And then I wanted to read all day. (laughs) When are you going to do that? I don't know. But I thought about exchanging it because I don't feel as much like doing that, but I do feel like going to the spa. That sounds amazing. Let's do that. Not that I don't want to have dinner with you and everybody, but Alicia's also leaving and yeah. I um I know that Kevin O'Leary, every time he signs a new contract and he's worked really hard on like a new show, he buys himself a watch to celebrate that so that he has a reward in exchange for all the hard work that he's done. Mm-hmm. I think it's cool. You know, it's, especially if it's something that you can like collect or if it's like a could vacation. Literally could be anything. One of my rewards is a purse. That's awesome. You know which one it is. I do know which one it is and I will never buy it for you. No, that's fine. I'll buy it for myself. Exactly, because it's your reward. Hell yeah. I, you can't do the work and then I... I feel like I'll still be, feel guilty though. I'll be like, <laughs> oh, I said I was going to buy this for myself when I got this, but... It's a little early. It's a little, it's a little expensive. <laughs> um, yeah, and I feel like people don't think enough about that, about 
I mean, people always try, like you say to each other, but like, that's so great, but that's so great that you did that. Or like, I should feel better about this, but it's only when you like actively take that time away. Yeah, It's okay to, I get so much guilt sometimes out of spoiling myself, you know, and I'm constantly re- like the other day when I had to stay home and let the cleaners in and wait while they were cleaning the condo. Yeah. And I couldn't come and to the office and shoot my video right away, which I wanted to do in the morning. Yeah. I was getting so antsy and so frustrated. And then I just kind of went, wait, why am I getting so stressed out? Literally no one knows this video is coming. This was a deadline I set for myself. It doesn't change. I have other stuff I can do. Yep. It doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. Yep. Why am I so stressed out about it? We put so much it? pressure on ourselves. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. I think people do that in their lives too. They just, a lot of little things that, I mean, I was, when I was at that full moon party, there was uh, a woman there who was talking about how she has this really intense mom guilt. And when she, I mean, I'm, I'm not a mom, but I do... I am a person who feels a lot of guilt in my family. We've nicknamed it the Walsh guilt. And Lizzie's like, mom's maiden name. <laughs> Walsh, yes, is my mom's maiden name. And uh, it's something that we all try and deal with. And I remember being really young and feeling guilty if I didn't like hug my mom before bed or something stupid like yeah. that. And a lot of that still translate and in, translates into our life today. Well, there's, it's, so remember what I was saying before when I was like, life's so complex and there's all these other things and on top of it all. When I was driving, I, I empathize with this. Do you ever feel like this? And I think we talked about it where it's like, you have all these friends and you're like, I want to see my friends. And then you start thinking about how you're, okay, I just saw this friend and then I'll see the next friend. The and friend then, cycle. And the, the friend, friend seeing cycle, cycle. The friend seeing cycle. And then you're like, Oh my God, it just stresses me out because by the time I'm done seeing all the friends, I have, I have to, to go back to the over. first friend. And yeah. then I never even gave myself time for me. Yeah. It, <laughs> this is really hurting you. And no, it's not. It's no, I love seeing my friends. Your voice. I love seeing my friends, but at some point, you know, you feel the guilt. Yeah. And then, then you feel stressed out about that. And then, and then, and then all of a sudden it's like this stupid cycle. Yeah. And it's weird because like, I don't know if I've gotten like more real as I've gotten older or if I'm... More cynical because of me. If you want to say that, I didn't say That's it. That's what you say. That came right from the devil's it's- mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't say that. But yeah, no, I, say, I say I don't real. Care. You say cynical. I say I've become more real. Okay. I think I was maybe like, I don't know, hiding something before, or like some happiness. I was always just smiling and overly... Like a false... Off- like a false perception of, of the world. I'm definitely always the person that like glass is half full, like right. no matter what. Yeah. But I'm definitely like, sometimes I look at the glass and I'm like, but it's, but it's a, it's just a glass or <laughs> whatever yeah. it is. You know what I mean? Like it's fine. And you start getting caught up in all these other things. And I think as I've gotten older, I start feeling more of this pressure and this stress mm-hmm. and it can get to me more often than it did in the past. Mm-hmm. Well, I have mild obsessive compulsive disorder, which I think I've mentioned already on the podcast, but it, I mean, a part of it is basically if something goes wrong that really bothers me, it's going to affect everything and I can't forget about it and I fixate on it and I have to get through it yeah. and it'll also, ruin my whole day. Your intuition is so good too that you'll be like, I just have a feeling that the course is going to get canceled. And I'll be like, no, it's not. Everything's fine. I did say that. When did I say that? You said it before the course got canceled. No, but it wasn't even (laughs) because of coronavirus. This was before we started talking about coronavirus. Yeah. And you were just, you were just feeling it. (gasps) That's so weird. And it's weird. And you just said it. And I'm like, no, everything's fine. Everyone's stoked. Everything's good. And I was like, I just have this feeling it's not going to happen. And... That's that, so creepy. And you get so like all I so, forgot. And it's hard because sometimes they'll be like, "You're being negative." Yeah, and I'm like, "No, I I just have these senses based on like the way certain things are going, and it just doesn't seem." No, and you're usually right. Not always. Oh, I don't like that. You're not. Well, you're not always right about it. No, but, but I've I've got at you, least an eighty percent. If you were a baseball player, you'd be a, like a first hand pick. Yeah. 
I mean, people yeah. would be, I don't know if that's a, a baseball language. I think it's just picking up on things. I think um, some people can be more sensitive to trends and patterns and emotions and yeah. like all of those things that lead into like a good business deal or yeah. something or getting to know a person, trusting a person. I just think maybe my life has, you know, encouraged me like things that have happened have kind of pushed me to be more aware of that In stuff. tune with it. Yeah, more in tune with those things. I don't know. It's yeah. like a weird sixth sense. We joke about it a lot that I have this weird intuition thing. Yeah, and it's and like it's tough because sometimes like I'll hear it and I'll just be like, Lizzie. Like, He's like, don't say that. I feel like because I've said it, then you know it'll be true. I think and that's why like, I get upset. It and then I'm like, no, I want things to be fun and good. I know, but me saying it doesn't make it not that. I'm just warning. I know. but Because like, usually by the time I say it, I've been thinking about okay, it for a while. Okay, but imagine you're on the beach and then you see a lightning strike in the in the distance and you're like, I'm still on the beach. The lightning storm isn't here. No, you're supposed to clear the beach. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's so far in the distance. You still have time to sunbathe. And you're like, no, nah, that that might not hit us. And it's like... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, but you know what I start doing? What? I start planning. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm the planner. And I'm still on the water skimboarding. Yeah, you are. And I'm <laughs> going, okay, how much longer can I let him stay in there before I think he'll die? <laughs> And we need to leave because we'll get rained on and I'm thinking about how to pack up all our stuff and whatever. That's just being like, I feel like, isn't that like women are always like, that's just being a woman. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We're planners. I know. And you're, you're protectors too. That's why. Yeah. And we're all like, can you take care of us, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh. No, I appreciate you. Like it was on... It was last night you, you, when we were in the car. We went out for dinner afterwards, uh, after work, and just kind of telling Lizzie about my day. And I was just feeling a little overwhelmed by it all. And you were just such a great listener, and you provided so much feedback. And a lot of it is we just like reframing a lot of it too. Like it's you reframed a lot of my thoughts. And like sometimes your brain just like likes to lean on the side of negativity, and then I'll just keep repeating myself. Oh, you corner hard. yourself. I mentally. Def I definitely. I mean, we, I, I think I we mean, all I do. do too. Yeah. And I was, even when I was at home last week, I was feeling kind of like that and just being like, oh, this is so hard. This thing I'm doing is so hard. I'm just having like an off day and da, da, da. And I had this split second where I was like, what if I stopped indulging in those thoughts? And yeah. I was just like, today's fine. And I'm going to, or maybe today's not fine, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be the badass that pushes through this because I'm so much stronger than all of this Isn't other shit. Isn't it cool that you can like have a moment of self-realization like that? Yeah. It's like, it's, and everyone has the capacity to do it and you just decide I'm the stronger person here yeah. and I have a choice. Like you always have a choice to decide to be happy, to decide to keep going, to decide to not get heated about something, to decide to be the bigger person, um, to try again, uh, and it takes a lot of self-awareness and strength and patience. But I mean, that does come back to being successful. Everyone, who, everyone who's anyone who's in a successful job or career path or whatever, they've had so many downfalls. And it's their ability to just be like, well, I'm going to keep on going and it'll be great and it'll be fine because I'm tough. Because you're taking control of it. You're not yeah. You're not letting it walk all over you. Yeah. And it's hard knowing because... Knowing when to let go and knowing when to keep going. Like, Well, it's wild because you can be in those moments and you're like, I just give up. I know that it's like, you know those stupid things where like it'll be Monday, it'll be like 9.01, I'm done with Mondays. And it's yeah. like, I'm already done with Mondays. And you're like, don't let it take over your day like that. Yeah. That like I know that's like a meme and that's a joke, but like don't don't let outside forces, you know, if you're not enjoying work, take control. Start a side project. We were with a friend of ours on Friday and she went above and beyond on a project. And then her leaders were like, Okay, now this is gonna be your full time job and we're gonna They made a whole new position for her. Made a whole new position. Now she's doing like super dope stuff because she took control over her career and her mm -hmm. job. So like if you're unhappy in certain situations, don't let like... You don't have to follow the rule book. You never have to. And you don't have to let the day take over. Like, oh, the accountant texted and now I have to get this. And you're just like, 
be strong. You're like, if you don't want to do it, hire someone out Mm -hmm. and then focus on the thing that you love and start doing Mm -hmm. that. Don't let like, don't let the thing take over your life, the negativity. Cause I I say this, like I'm not the best practitioner of this all the time. No, we all have moments, but I think even with um, my vlogs, for example, I knew when I started, I was like, these aren't going to be a hit as soon as I start because it's different. It's not what everyone's used to seeing. They're going to be longer. They're going to be not as like highly produced as some of the other things I make. They're probably not going to do as well. But what I can look forward to is the fact that I'm putting out something every week. Yep. Um, I'm giving people another opportunity online to find me. I'm giving them a different piece of content that maybe they're consuming in a different way, a new side of me, my personality. I think people like you're so you're getting you're averaging I'm playing like, the long game. You're averaging like eight to ten thousand views on these things, which is pretty freaking now they're, insane. Yeah, they're going up like the last couple are pretty much hitting ten. Yeah. So I'm getting more. And so, I know it's a long game and I brace myself for that. And I'm like, I have faith and I'm taking a leap of faith in paying for this editor and in doing this that it's going to benefit me. And I talked to a couple different people about the idea and everyone came back and was like, it's a great idea. You have to do it. So I think when other people who are in your industry agree with you that it's something you should try, then you got to go for it. But it may not happen right away. And you got to be strong enough to just like reinforce your belief that it'll be fine and push through. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do. And I've had a lot of people tell me that they love watching them. And like a couple, Cody said, he's like, this is my favorite thing on the internet right now. And I'm like, that's crazy to me. Can I show you something? Sure. Okay. So you were feeling sad about like, oh, me, no, like no one's going to like this. It's not going to be as great. Um, you know, I know it's different piece of content. You were already providing a lot of like positive feedback. Oh, but it gives me like another opportunity to like make something different. It's going weekly. Here's one more thing to like make you stoked. This is a picture of 10,000 people. I'm showing. That's Lizzie. like actually horrifying. I want. I'm showing. Oh. Liz, I, lo- I showed up. Look, just literally looked up ten thousand people on Google, and when you can think about that, think about just this for a quick second. The the costs of like how much it costs to produce Is it your ten thousand or hundred thousand. That's ten thousand. Oh yeah, on each video. On each video. So like when you think about that, when you put yeah. all those people in a room, so one, like imagine here's just like some other things to put on on your radar to really feel good about this. So number one, you can look at that and be like, dang, son. It's mm-hmm. like a football stadium of people. There's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Two, imagine how much it costs to fill a stadium of 10,000 people and then you to be in the middle of the field going... Hi, everyone. Here's my message. Here's the thing I want to share with you in the world. Here's Mm -hmm. my version of a football game. Yeah. Right? That would cost tens of thousands of dollars in like operation costs, food, beverage, logistics. You film a video, you put your camera up, you pay an editor, you have a really reasonable size thing, and it gets seen by 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. That's fucking rad, man. Congratulations. No, I think it's awesome. So I think, I mean, to the people out there, there's always a way to reframe everything. I I mean, I need reframing all the time. Not in like a jokey like camera reframing, but it's important. You know, Lizzie helped me last night and she reminded me of a lot of things that were going on that were great. And also that some of my problems, although our problems can be looked at in different light Mm -hmm. and that can really change how you feel about a situation and make you happy again. Mm -hmm. So if, if your partner is, or your friend is having trouble doing that for themselves, then you need to be that person for them and give them advice when you can. But sometimes it just means listening to them and validating that what's going on feels real. But offer them a different perspective, not in that like, well, you're wrong and it's really like this, just more like, well, just consider this, you know? Totally. Um, And that's how you be a good supportive partner. Compliment compliment people on the things that they are doing because did you ever see that Dove commercial? I'm sure you did. The one where um, the person's like, here are all the things I, I think about myself. I'm fat, I'm this, I'm that. Yeah. And then they got a bunch of strangers to be like, what do you think of this person? They're like, I love their hair and their eyes and their yeah. their body's so beautiful. And you know, I yeah. wish I had her hands or something like that. And the yeah. person like gets all reminded of like all the great things that they have. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes like, I know this is like a harsh example, but I'll be, our, 
you know, I'll be on the street and I'll see somebody who might be struggling with some sort of form of, you know, disability in their life, mm-hmm. right? And I, I'm reminded how lucky we all are to have our health, um, to, to be able to come to work every day, to work, to love, to play with a cat, to do all these things. And like, it is a reminder that these simple things are all that we really need mm-hmm. to be happy, about the little things and the simple things. We always, I mean, we have this, um, this like need as humans to have more and more and more of everything. And you don't, you, like, don't, you really, yeah. really don't. I feel like this podcast is like for all of you guys, but it's also just as therapeutic for us. <laughs> yeah, I'm like happy after talking about <laughs> it. Yeah, I feel better it. now. And especially like Luna's been napping on my lap and now she just woke up and she's licking me. Oh, you're so cute. Do you guys want to see exclusive Luna picks? We post them to the Patreon page for all our <laughs> members. Uh, everyone seems it's to really true. enjoy it. Um, because we also realized something with Luna. This is like a side tangent. But the cat, I think, is going to always be a bit of a small cat. She's a little underweight. Not even really a little. Like She should be three pounds because she's three months. She's two pounds. <laughs> and that's not, that's not the worst. No, but... But I mean, considering not someone bad, in the terrible. elevator, <laughs> someone in the elevator was like, oh, I remember when our cat was that small. We got her when she was like two weeks old and she was so tiny. Now she's 11 months and she's huge. And I was like, she's three months. And the guy was like, she's still so small. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, she's eating more now. She does drink like she's pretty normal. I think her teeth are starting to come in. So she doesn't really like eating that many, that much um, like kibble. Yeah. But sorry, no one else wants to hear this. I'm like so well, excited no. to talk Here, about Here, let's find a segue. The segue is that for us in our lives where our lives are so busy with travel and all these things that can also be kind of stressful from, like from time to time, the simple joy of the cat has brought so much happiness into our lives. Mm-hmm. And She if, makes me put down whatever I'm doing and take a break for a moment and like totally. pet her and cuddle her and just like my let my mind go blank. My screen is so low now. Really? I, you know, that was averaging, like, this is like embarrassing. I was averaging like five or six hours sometimes I'm per day. I'm not surprised. I know, it's so bad. And now I'm at like two. That's why I would get mad two at you. Two to three. Listen to our distractions episode. I'm at like less than three on average now. Yeah, and then like you have to be reminded, I'm not just like, I'm. yes, I'm wasting a lot of time on it, but at the same time, we also are like posting and watching it videos work, and yeah. doing like, today I was on it double checking analytics and then crying because my video wasn't doing well. <laughs> and then my screen was dirty. So I had to, like screen was still on. So I had to wipe the tears off of it. So oh that's why gosh. I'm just being dramatic. Oh my gosh. So anyways, guys, um, that's the, that's, that kind of sums up how to deal with someone and your partner who might be, you know, in a position in their life where if they're stressed out, these are some tips and some ways to make their lives better. So if you guys enjoyed this video, what we would like to say to you is here's the quickest outro ever. Don't forget to leave a review. That shit actually helps. Also check out our creative club at patreon.com backslash a couple of creators. And if you're still listening at this point, we love you. We appreciate you. Goodbye. Bye.